uh, Kamal Dean, great news in the cycles of government, somebody will say, but for in, uh, individual bondholders, institutional bondholders, we've had Joe Jackson, etc., questioning this sort of communication. It's as if to send a, a signal positively that everything is fine while people are wailing, on the other hand, just because we bought government credits and government cannot just pay them. Well, thank you very much. And um, once again, very good morning to you. Um, good morning to my brother, um, Eddie G, and of course to Lawyer Pia. Um, let me seize this opportunity to congratulate Ghana's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, um, Honorable Shelley Ayakobotri. Um, she is now the Secretary General of Commonwealth elect, waiting to take office um, somewhere in April 2025. Um, it was by dint of hard work, I guess, that she got there. Um, we would have to congratulate her once it is the lifting of the flag of Ghana high um, for all of us or to all of us. Again, I would say a very good morning to all um, viewers and listeners um, at large. Roland. Yes, Ghana went through debt exchange program or debt restructuring program. Factors necessitated that. What are those factors? Yes, did we owe? Did we borrow? I agree. Perfectly we borrowed. <clears throat> and did we borrow for infrastructure development and for the upkeep of our economy? Yes, so. We got to a level where lots of, you know, um, occurrences came in to, if you like, present certain shocks to the economy or present some, you know, uh, challenges to the economy. And the major one, not just Oligana, was COVID, which we all agree. Every single economy in this world that saw a trajectory of growth with the emergence or coming into being of COVID saw the economy nose diving. Every single country in this world, not just Ghana. And you agree with me that when I say factors brought us to the level where we needed to restructure our debts, okay, and mention borrowing and mention the growth trajectory, you would also agree with me that indeed these external shocks that I've spoken about or I'm talking about, saw us not moving. Not just Ghana, but many countries. And by that, we had to go back to look into ourselves and say, mm, if this has happened and these are projections that we have made, this is the way we wanted to go and we could not achieve that. What do we have to do? We needed a solution. Which solution, and not just only Ghana again, Many countries were profess the solution of restructuring your debt to make them sustainable. And these are facts. That is the more reason why we needed to do an internal one and do an external one. Then we get our economy to see whether it will rebound or not. And Randy, um, Roland, you agree with me that yes, where we are today. If you look at the figures, I am not an economist and I don't pretend to be one. But of course, I read whatever is there and of course, I experience what is there as well. You would agree with me that by virtue of the fact that we have been able to restructure those debts, okay, and the finance minister, you know, clearly made us understand that these were the benefits that we got from restructuring of the debts. When you go out there, some debts were even forgiven us. To the tune of almost five billion, if you like, dollars, according to the finance minister. When you look at out there, some debt servicing reliefs have actually been given us. Now, if we were to pay, to pay maybe um, this amount at this time, by virtue of the fact that we have restructured and then agreed with the creditor, we say, okay, we are moving it from here to this. Therefore, some relief. As a result of the relief, we are getting some, if you like, benefits out of it. Some amount of money there, 4.3 or so billion. If you come home, we did our internal debt restructuring again, and some amount of money was actually, um, you know, uh, chucked again 
in terms of benefit. So putting all together, the finance minister said, look, it was essential, it was important that we go in for such a solution or such, you know, program. Having gone into the program, the amount of money that we have realized, not as in cash given us as a country, but looking at the debt servicing relief, looking at the, um, you know, the cancellation of debt, and looking at also the reprieve that we are going to have in terms of debt servicing, either locally or internally, putting all together or aggregating together, some close to $12 billion, okay, it saved us. For us to be able to cushion ourselves and rebound as an economy. So indeed, if you look at our macro economy today, okay, everything points to the fact that indeed we have a future that looks good. To the extent that even looking at the GDP growth, projections will maybe be higher in 2025 there about all these actually have are, are on so it tells you that there are some technical hands on board there's some work being done and the debt exchange program indeed even though it came with some negatives obviously some bondholders had cause to you know also this um, picketing and all those things a whole lot of problems came in but nonetheless if we had moved from a particular level and based on some reasons we got ourselves into challenges and we decided to go into a solution. Which solution was the restructuring, both internal and external. And the restructuring completely or successfully done. Based on this, the finance minister says, look, this is the outcome of what we have done. I think that we should be loading the technical hands on board. We should be loading whoever is the manager of the economy right now. Of course, if we had done this, finished this, and then the future still looked bleak, that would have been dangerous. So you are To the extent that inflation moved to 54%. In this country before. Today, as we sit, the, 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 the managers of 54%. Yes, at the point. Be because, because. Yes. What account for that inflation? I just, I told you in the external shocks. I told you what happened to every okay. single economy okay. in this country. So, so Kamal Dean, yes. are you saying that Ghana going bankrupt, going to its creditors to restructure its debts, mm -hmm. both domestically and externally, mm -hmm. is a good thing? I just told you that it wasn't for Ghana alone to say I am going for debt structuring. It was because the international economies that we have, the bigger economies even, even COVID, UK, Russia, Ukraine. talk of UK, talk of US, talk of Australia, COVID, every Russia, single Ukraine. country that matters in this country, I mean in this world, okay, went through this. And I'm saying Ghana did not just assume to say that, look, we are going to, uh, if you like, um, uh, debt restructuring. Conditions necessitated that that's the point i made and i'm saying that based on those conditions our economies were affected and ghana's economy wasn't left out okay why 2017 we didn't talk of that we never contemplated on even going to imf 2018 we never contemplated on that 2019 no we're moving until almighty covid came in and this is the fact people do not want to hear which people do not want to hear so whatever they may say yes Whoever wants to say that, look, there was, there is a reason why Ghana decided that, look, let us go for debt exchange program, I mean, debt restructuring, and not just only Ghana. Many countries did that, and I'm saying that because of this, these external shocks that affected our economy and affected other economies, we had no option than to say, hey, wait a minute, if we plan paying this money this time because of X, Y, Z, our economy actually has nosedive and we cannot have money to do that. Let us go and engage our creditors and then see what we can do. So I thought that there was a reason why they did that. Adiji, 